Hello fellow artists and welcome to my YouTube channel, Laurel Heartworks. Uh, wherever you are in the world, I'm grateful that you are um, joining me and hope that this will be a worthwhile demonstration for you today. Um, one of the most important skills we can develop as artists is being able to identify value patterns in our subject. And that's the topic that I would like to focus on today, being able to identify value patterns. I remember being in an early watercolor workshop that I took many years ago where I learned a definition of pattern that um, I didn't really get at first, but um, as I've studied it and um, worked more with this definition over the years, it has really uh, been helpful in helping me being able to boil my subjects down to the essence of its value pattern. And here's the definition I would like to share. I'll have to probably say it a couple times because it's a little complicated. Pattern is the arrangement of shapes where the whole is seen before the parts. I'm going to say it one more time. Pattern is the arrangement of shapes where the whole is seen before the parts. It kind of reminds me of the saying that um, when we say you can't see the forest for the trees. In other words, um, if we were to paint a forest, we could start to um, paint it by painting every individual pine needle on the tree. Or we could make our task much easier by painting the shape of the entire forest with just value changes to indicate an entire group of trees. I'd like to show this little demonstration. Um, this is really simplified, but on the left you can see where um, I have focused more on the detail in every tree and trying to get the branches in, and how much more fractured that is to the eye than when I paint the entire shape of that forest as one connected and continuous shape with just some variations of color and value in it. And to me, it's a, a much more pleasing um, aesthetic effect when, um, when the pattern is seen before the parts. And that's what that uh, definition of pattern means. We can become so bogged down in seeing all the detail in our subject that we don't get the essence of the whole picture and our painting structure fractures into a million unrelated pieces or parts. I remember an art teacher saying, you don't ever start with the eyelashes. <laughs> and it, that's always tempting for us to do that. We see these beautiful details and we want to start with those, but it's much better if we can start with the whole essence of the picture first and then move to the detail last. When we look at a subject in color, it's often difficult to immediately see a two or three value pattern. Um, a two value pattern would be simply light and dark. A three value pattern would be light, medium, and dark values. I've shown this um, value scale before. Um, I like using a 10 degree value scale. So the lights, uh, I, I like to think of as these first three values, values one through three, and then these four middle tones here, values four through seven, as a middle or medium value, and then the eight through ten would be the dark values. I can't really stress enough how important it is to um, work with a value scale and get familiar and learn to match your values um, with the colors that you're using. Um, the reason this value scale has these little notches is so I can place it on um, a value in my subject or hold it up to a subject and match it. I see that's value 10 there. This, let's guess, let's say maybe that's a value, I'm going to say a value 7. No, nope, it's darker than that. I was off, so that would be an 8 or a 9, probably an 8, value 8. So you can see how very helpful this is in being able to get your values correct when you're painting. Um, it's easier to pick out the simple value pattern in your subject um, when you view it in black and white. Uh, color is 
much more confusing because there's so many colors. But when we can look at our subject in a black and white uh, reference form, we can see a lot easier the pattern of the value, value shapes. I'd like to just show one, um, an example of this from my book. Um, here is a, an example of a photo in full color. And you can see that it, it really is kind of hard to pick out the values. But when we look at it in black and white, it really simplifies things down to three values, a dark, a middle, and a, a light. There's an app that I would like to share with you um, that I think is really helpful and it's really fun to play with. It's called um, Notanizer and it's a companion app to Grid Painter. This is um, the subject that I'm going to be working from today that you can see I've brought it into this Notanizer app. And um, the fun thing about this is you can play with these values and this is simply the photo in black and white. And then there's a, a way where you can bring in three different values. So you can play with this little scale at the bottom and it can, it's really fun because it's like, it's the same idea as making a, um, a black and white value sketch or thumbnail. Um, but you can do it so much easier and quicker and you can look at all the different possibilities. That, uh, so it's just really a lot of fun to play with. There's one with, with a lot more middle value and very little light value. Um, this one, I can bring it back to this way where I've got a lot more lights in the painting. And um, anyway, it's just a really useful little tool to help you with um, getting familiar with identifying the value pattern or looking at the whole picture um, of your subject. Um, and as you can see on my board here, I've chosen one of those value um, uh, sketches from the Grid Painter um, app to work with today. So I'm in connection with this idea of getting the value pattern. That's why I have got two different source materials here today, the one in color and then the one in black and white. And you can see right off how much easier it is to get the idea of seeing the whole picture before I see all the parts by looking at it in black and white. So that's a really useful tool for you if you have trouble um, identifying values. And when I used to do my drawings, um, I would actually shade in some of the areas that were my middle value ground and um, then I would erase the pencil out at the end. But um, I've done this for so long over the years that I can kind of see it in my mind now and I don't have to go too, uh, into too much detail to, to uh, make those um, initial thumbnail sketches anymore. And you can get to that point easily as well if you just keep practicing um, looking at things in black and white. Squinting is another way to help simplify your subject. Um, when you squint down, I think you're um, cutting out some of the light that comes into your eye, and so you see um, a, a smaller array of values in your subject. But anyway, I am going to paint this subject today. Um, it's a very simple subject, but I chose it because it um, is really a good one for seeing the pattern before the parts. And um, I'm as I start this, I think you're going to be a little scared because it's going to be very chaotic in the beginning. And I'll probably be scared along with you. But um, there is just something that happens when we start with chaos, start with the big pattern, and then gradually boil it down to the essence. And that's what you do at the end of the painting. When you add those final darks and final details, um, that's when the painting jumps out as a completed subject. So I'll be starting today with um, a squirrel mop. And um, I'm going to use um, 
my traditional method today of painting with a, a triad. Um, this will be a, a red, yellow, and blue triad. I'll be using um, manganese blue, uh, alizarin crimson, permanent alizarin crimson, and I think yellow ochre as my yellow. And as I start into this wash, I think you will feel like I'm using way too raw or way too brilliant color. But um, as I come back in on top of that with darker colors, um, it, will, it will cover a lot of that really brilliant color and just leave pops of it to shine through at the end. So don't be too alarmed if this is a big mess. And if it's very, very colorful to begin with, I'm going to get a good puddle of, um, of yellow ochre. I think I dipped into the raw sienna first there, but that's okay. This is yellow ochre here. And then um, my manganese blue. I'm, I usually try to keep the yellow away from the blue on the first initial... Um, initial uh, mingling on the palette because it tends to go into green too quickly. Okay, so now as I'm starting, I'm just going to um, mingle that color onto dry paper. I need my glasses, I forgot. Won't be seeing much without those. And I'm, I'm not paying attention really to where I'm putting this color per se, except that I'm just going to be jumping over everything that is completely in, in the light. And I'm just uh, creating that really, really nice bead at the bottom of that wash so it just keeps coming on down, down the paper here. And um, even though those branches there are going to end up as a green, they're going to start out with this, just this um, light value, light value wash overall at the beginning. Okay, I just um, switched to a little bit smaller brush too. Um, down to, I think, a number 12 of my low Corel brushes, low Cornell brushes. I want to be really careful right here to get that, um, to get that really nice shadow jump right here. So that's really my, my center of interest is this, um, this beautiful light right there. So I want to make sure I don't do anything that's going to really hinder that or cover that up.
got to catch these beads too so I don't get backwashes. Although it's not too critical here because I can um, I can come back and um, cover them up with the darker tones as I work into those darker values. My paints are getting a little tacky for my needs right now. I'm going to add in a little bit of this um, color here for the those dried leaves there that are on coming around that post. I just added a little bit of warm into that wash. Okay, I'm just getting a little bit of the shadow pattern here on the chair. I realize that this actually comes all the way over. a little bit of the light left there. And then back behind there is just a real dark shadow. The more you, the more you uh, get familiar with um, looking for the value pattern, um, the easier it will be for you to see it without having to really concentrate too much on drawing it out. But as you can see, I'm just trying to get in the pattern of the values without um, without really going into detail yet. I'm going to want to do just a little indication that that's the edge of the window there. And you can see that my my um, first wash kind of morphs as I go. 
I'm adding in a little bit of um, different blues as, as um, the colors mix together. And the reason I stopped my wash here is that there's a, a really nice little line of, of white or light across there. So that gives me a, a natural stopping point for the ending of that initial wash without, um, without it being a problem that there's going to be a hard line there. Okay. So I think I've got everything covered that is um, that is in shadow and left left the lights and you can already start to see that that um, pattern is jumping out at you um, without really having gone into any detail yet. Um, okay, I want to get in this bottom part. So I'm going to leave, um, I'm going to leave that little white edge. And it looks like there's a little bit of sun coming, coming down through here. I don't want a, to a total white, but And I'm leaving a little bit of this stuff here by just painting, painting back behind it. And I want this really pretty. This might be a little bit dark. more of a gray. Add a little bit more blue in there. And notice my um, shadows are helping you to see the the angle of the light coming that way. Okay, then um, Coming down into this dark stuff, I'm going to go into uh, ultramarine blue and um, alizarin and bring in some, um, that was transparent oxide red. And I want that to kind of bleed back up into that gray. I want to start getting a little bit of depth in that value. And these pretty little pops of warm in here are going to be important later on. So I've got that nice um, sienna color on my brush. I'll get that other um, get this little planter thing in. Okay, and then the snow, 
I just want some pure blue for those shadows. But maybe I will jump down ahead here and go into this other bottom stuff. And here is kind of where that blossom is a little bit useful. It looks a little like it's, um, I don't know, plants or something coming back up into there. If I can get my value to the right depth here, I, I won't have to go back in here, which is always a good thing when you don't have to go back in. There's this front third of the painting should be should be my darkest darks here. And my most vivid color. And then there's these nice little pops of warm again. And we don't need to really know what that is. It's just a bunch of leaves and stuff like that, but it's not necessary to really spell that out in too much detail. And I admit that this is not, maybe not a, I'm going to switch down now to a number eight brush. Um, this is not a style that everybody likes, but um, but it's one that I like. <laughs> and it's important to paint what you like. I still want those um, shadows on the snow, a little blue or a little pure blue. But I'm not getting that. Stronger than that. So I have um, completed the first stage of this painting, which was just to get that initial. Um, value pattern uh, down and if you compare it to what I was looking at here in the black and white it's pretty close to the way that I wanted it to turn out. I've got these whites through here and the whites through here which are really what the painting is talking about that chair in the in the sunlight and the, the windowsill and then I've left the lights over here the next stage now will be to go in and strengthen some of these areas, um, just bringing in another another uh, set of values to, to darken and basically to paint behind this stuff that, that I'm going to want to push forward. And I'm going to use, uh, I think, my number 10. Um, I could re-wet this. And maybe, maybe I will in places here, just so that I can still get some really nice um, lost, lost edges um, in that foliage of pine boughs. I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to use the indanthrene blue here and um, mix up a nice, um, <laughs> well, I just used both blues. Mix up a nice um, dark pine color. Okay, getting a little more blue into it. be stronger than that. Especially if I'm coming in on wet paper. Add 
adding a little bit of um, alizarin crimson to kind of purple it up. And then where, where I've got these lighter, lighter um, pine boughs, I'm going to bring in a little bit of more of a warm, warm color. I can see a little bit there. So it's just going to give a kind of a nice little variation or pop of, of um, high key color there. Another area over here that's really pretty dark. And here I am going to put in a little detail to indicate that they're that these are pine pine branches. And then it's fun too to sometimes take some of the lights out with paper towel through here. Blur some of that just a little bit. Then I'm going to come right in to the window so that I don't even have a, a break between the foliage there. Still wanting some a little bit stronger value back in there. I can't seem to get there. So you can see how that's now setting off the, and there's a few of these little bells coming down over the, I don't know what you call that thing, the sash, whatever. get some color in this thing. <laughs> it's kind of been giving me trouble. Now you can really see that window. Nice. Take a little bit of, there's just a little bit of a gradation in there. And then I like how there's um, a little bit of a value on that um, window sill ledge. And you can tell that this second um, 
second phase of the painting does go slower because now I'm I'm concentrating on getting detail in and um, explaining things a little more. There's just such an excitement when the subject starts to take shape like this that it really, it's really a lot of fun. That shadow back there needed to be darkened. And then up in here, this is going to be kind of a fun fun area to paint behind up in this up in this area up here. So this is where I'm going to leave some of this um, to look like those boughs are and that's still a little bit damp so it's so it's good for um, For trying to um, indicate this kind of furry furriness of the pine boughs. And the more that you try this and, and work with it, the better the better you'll be at doing this and just kind of seeing it in your mind as you go. And then I want to leave this and paint behind those uh, little leaves and stuff there. And that shadow comes right down over the chair. strengthen these little dividers in the chair back. But now you can see this stuff here a little better. And this continues right down uh, behind the chair here. A dark cast shadow along there, and um, this too, 
I guess I am going to have to go back in there. I kind of don't want to because it's so pretty, but... It is a darker shadow. But this, this is really kind of a good lesson in um, showing you how... Um, the more, the more abstractly you paint something, the more real it ends up looking. I, I have never figured that out, but it's kind of an oxymoron, but that it's true. So that's that's taking nice shape under there. And this has got to be darker under here, too. And as well as up here, I need to um, set off the uh, side of this post by painting back behind it. And in between there too, in between the two. up a little bit. This is I lost a little bit of my light there because I, <laughs> I had drawn that. inaccurately. As you, um, as you work back and forth in between the different colors in the triad, you get so much, um, so much more variety in your color. And like I said um, at the beginning, where that color may seem a little bit raw, when you end up um, at the end, you've covered most of it with this this uh, second darker, deeper value. And I need to kind of set off, maybe if I just indicate that, that will kind of show that the chair's not half cut off. <laughs> okay, that's a little better. Um, still feeling like this to be deepened a little back here. And that's, um, maybe I'm going to pull that over the whole chair there.
know what's on the the chair except that it looks like it's a pile of snow. And then I'm working down here now. I am gonna deepen the value there too. Okay, continuing on down, um, I'm just going to uh, strengthen some of the darks in this foreground area. Um, there needs to be a little bit of a um, anchoring to these little weeds in this. There's some snow there. I want to leave. And then there's maybe a little bit of darker dark than that in there. what that is back there, but there's something kind of dark back here. At the edge of that porch. shadow underneath the porch, whatever that is. Okay. And you might question my colors here, but I'm just, I'm going more for value than color. Remember I've said before that, um, you can paint something in any color, really, as long as your value's accurate. But you can't really do that with um, with color or with value. Your values have got to be your values have got to be on, or something, or it's not going to read right.
and it's it's always nice to leave I guess what I would call breathing spaces in a dark otherwise you get you get kind of suffocated <laughs> I still want a little bit more. Color in here, but because we're in the for we're in the very front of the foreground, so it's closer to you and the color would be um, more vibrant. Still wanting a little bit of this to have a little more dark here and there in it too. So it's just stuff there. We don't need to know what it is. And I feel like there's a little bit of grass right there. So I kind of want a little bit of green. poking through the snow on that. I think it's kind of a late spring day, but still snowy. Um, my chair, trying to decide whether to put a light turquoise over it, and I think I might do it. Um, will I be sorry, though, is the question. Not always the question. <laughs> It's gonna have to be just really all right I've got to, I've got to clean off my palette it's it's getting crazy I'm just making mud now Let's try that again. Um, the closest thing I've got to turquoise is manganese blue. So if I green it back just a little, will it give me a turquoise? Yeah, that's pretty good. But I want it really, really pale. down in here I really do think I need to explain the chair a little bit better where it's got the shadow on it think you guys am I gonna be sorry I uh, I think it needed that and down in here there's more I can see one thing that's wrong um I haven't really gotten this dark behind the chair. And that 
That's maybe bugging me a little bit. Now maybe I've not left myself too much of a much of an explanation on this bottom part here, but I'm going to have to do a little cheating with some white gouache, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, and that will fix that up. Now back up into maybe just a little bit of dark. Kind of at the edge of that messy stuff, whatever is along there. And then I need to paint behind back in here so I've got these little, I don't want it that dark though. So it does look like there's some little sticks coming out of that pot. Okay. And then, um, I'm going to go back into the window here because I'm feeling like I want to show those pine boughs coming down. I'm sorry I can't finish my sentences while I'm painting. Okay, and then um, another little, probably some other little holes that would be poking through from the window back here. And those are just little abstract shapes that are still showing you that there's leaves and foliage back there. Maybe not leaves, but pine boughs. And I think this one too, back in here. That's a little bit darker, that'll set that off better. And I don't want to do too much of this stuff or I'm going to get, I'm going to be sorry. But I'm liking that that is a little bit darker back there, so.
See, I think that needed a bit more punch to it back there, and this as well. And I can jump across a little bit of this too to still look like branches and things in this thing there. Okay, this should have some. Shadow to it to match over here. I need to quit going in back here. I'm going to be sorry. Okay, anything more that's necessary? I kind of want to darken that, but I don't. I don't think I'm going to because that little color piece there that is just so pretty. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mess with it. But I think I will darken this window just a little bit more. Also let it have that little, I don't know what you call it. Well, I'm about finished here. This is not, um, I don't know, an extremely great painting, but I think it demonstrates what I've been tra talking about, and that is um, seeing the pattern before we see the parts, seeing the whole before the parts. That needed just a little bit of detail or darker value there. Make that look like those leaves along there. That's better. Um, I'm going to actually get into a little bit of white gouache and see if I can make a little better sense on that chair. Unless this is still too wet. I lost... Um, a little bit of my my light over here, and I would want to I want to get that back. And then there's some patterns of light on the on 
on the chair edge there. Just a little bit of the light behind there. That um, that really helped to use a little bit of that white to just bring back a couple of the whites I missed on the chair. And um, that's a trick that I, I use sometimes if I've if I've missed some of my white, I'm going to brighten up that back chair too, the chair back. And one other little thing I'm going to do and then wrap up here. Um, this just seems like it's um, going to have some clapboards here. I'm just going to put those in, whether it does or doesn't. And then I'll pull a couple of them out, so I'll have the negative space. And that's where I'm going to leave it. I will um, erase my... Oh, wait, I've got just a little dark right here. Just kind of give a shadow in that snow. Um, I'll erase my pencil marks out when it's um, dry. And um, I think that this was a really good example of what I'm talking about, about capturing that whole value pattern first and then coming back in and putting in just enough detail so that um, your subject is recognizable. So there's really a nice marriage between the abstract and the um, representational subject. And I think that that's really a pleasing, a pleasing thing to the eye. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration, and I will see you next time um, on another segment in watercolor. Thank you.